Hello, hello. You have found your way to the Brevis Talk podcast, where our message is eternal, but our delivery isn't quite that long. Brief and encouraging. That's our goal. Now, here's your host, Pastor Wayne Whiteside. Okay, we're back again today. Luke chapter 13, verses 1 to 5, and this is part 2, if you will. And these are strong, strong words. There were present at that season some who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered and said to them, Do you suppose that these Galileans were worse sinners than all other Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Or those eighteen on whom the tower of Siloam fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse sinners than all other men who dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. The belief system of that day, not uncommon to the Old Testament, was that any tragedy that occurred must be the result of a person's sin. Jesus corrected that. John chapter 9, verse 1 to 2, As he, Jesus, went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned? this man or his parents, that he was born blind. It was obvious to them that the man's misfortune was due to someone's sin. Job's friends had a question in chapter 4, verse 7 of Job. Consider now, who being innocent has ever perished? Where were the upright ever destroyed? They too believe that Job had sinned or he would not have had problems. Going back to John chapter 3, uh, John chapter 9, verse 3, that is, Jesus declares to his disciples, neither neither this man nor his parents sinned. And this speaks to the misguided tendency of so many misinformed and ill-formed Christians who heap imagined guilt upon themselves for the calamities that they have befallen them or their loved ones or their children. Folks, we must accept reality. Death happens. Tragedies come to all. Some unthinkable things befall the most godly and the most committed. Earnest and fervent followers of Jesus receive cancer diagnosis. Jesus does not take the bait in the beginning of this debate. He goes straight to the spiritual jugular vein of his proclamation intended here. Twice he says that unless you repent, you will likewise perish. Now, what is repentance? It's such a misunderstood word in our culture today. First of all, it's not just an emotional experience. Emotion may follow it, but emotion alone is not repentance. A confession to another sinner, whereby the confessor goes out and carries out ordered exercises as means of making restitution or paying the price of their sin in some sense. That is not repentance. There's a 60-minute interview from yesteryear where Mike Wallace asked the chief executioner for Whitey Bulger, the mafia leader at one time, if he'll go to heaven. He tells Wallace that a priest told him to do ten Hail Marys, ten Our Fathers, and don't do it again, and that would cover his sin of executing in excess of 20 individuals, and he would find his way into heaven. Friend, that's not repentance, biblical repentance. Repentance is a change of mind that involves the will also. If Jesus has not changed your conduct, And if he is not continuing to change your conduct, you are very likely not a Christian. Repentance is the lifestyle of true Christianity. Repentance is not an option. And unless you repent, you will likewise perish. Thanks for stopping by to be with us at the Brevis Talk Podcast. 
If you want to know more about us or hear other brief messages, go to BreakfastTalk.com and sign up to receive our blog and updates while you're there. Don't forget, Jesus loves you.